Yeah, we on Boss Talk 101. Yeah, we gon' talk. We be lit, lit. It's a unique hustle. Check it, check it, check it. It's a unique hustle. It's your boy, ECO. And I'm Reality TV, and this is reality. This is reality. We here. We, it, we in the building. Guess what, man? She thick. Thick, 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 thick. This look at that. Oh, I thought you was talking about me. No, nah, keep shaking that ass. My this bad. nigga is in the building, y'all. DJ ain't, Chose is in the building. Ain't that DJ Chose over there? Look like <laughs> DJ Chose in this motherfucker, man. What's going on? The other day I told him, I say, bitch, it's always me. Hey, man, what's going on, man? Chose, man, thank you for coming on Boss Talk 101, where the bosses talk. Make sure you guys like, subscribe to the channel. Make sure you guys go and uh. Get that membership, man. It's yes. going down, man. The members is uh, hey, and all the members are getting uh, perks. Well, they be not perks. <laughs> so y'all see, because they love them perks. <laughs> that's not what I'm saying. I'm saying we get we're gonna get y'all shirts and you know all type of different things from Boss Talk 101, guys. Thank you guys for always following the channel. But anyway, man, let's get into it, man. DJ Chose is in the house, man. He has been on Boss Talk 101 mm -hmm. before. DJ Chose came here, and we had a hell of a time every time he's been on the show. Most definitely. How you been, man? Man, I've been doing exclusive content. Oh, man, every damn day? Yeah, I got working. Some. DJChose.com, ladies, go check me out. I got exclusive content on that. Wow, so you got OnlyFans? I got a djtalk.com. Okay, mm. it's worse. Hey, I, it's exclusive. So you can just pay and get on there and see you you wilding out? Yeah, I'm going to slang that thing. Damn. <laughs> Let me get on my... You finna get on get your on phone, phone now? <laughs> Damn, man. Damn, this nigga here is here. Mr. Slang that thing himself. Slang that thing. DJ chose Mr. Slang that coming to a theater near you. You know what I'm talking about? Man, hold up, man. Bro, we starting off with this shit. Bro, this shit crazy, man. Man, listen, listen, man. I'm going to be real with you, man. Uh, a lot of stuff is very disturbing that I see on the internet, man. There was a picture that started surfacing the other day, and it was basically uh, going into. Uh, I think NBA young boy he was laying on the floor and it was some pills by him mm -hmm. and it kind of alarmed me because I'm like is he crying for help is this a new album cover mm -hmm. nothing ever was said about it but I just want to get your thoughts on when you see stuff like that on the internet, the internet today versus the way it used to be you know where you didn't have those type of things happening uh, I hate I hate a lot of things about the internet I get unfollowed for um, reposting my fans doing just, just dancing and stuff like that. I got them followed, and I realized that um, I don't know if the internet be wanting to, like. I feel like when girls dance to my music, it ain't negative. It's damn not like me saying, "Oh, she danced to my song, I'm gonna support it." But I don't think the internet be wanting to see nothing that ain't controversial. It's like now, all you know is controversy. I seen one of these posts from Super Bowl. It was like. Usher only got paid $617 And it was viral And I was like Why the hell y'all give a fuck What he got paid I really feel like You know that nigga ain't lose Usher did the Super Bowl And made him some, He got some money somewhere That nigga ain't doing no free show When the last uh, Usher came to y'all Your daughter Sweet, Sweet 16 Hell no, nah. <laughs> Not for free Never been there and, uh, and, and, and motherfuckers Oh Usher did it for me. And I bought I bought that whole Confessions album One I, and two and, and he didn't come Man you know how many times I stream that shit man <laughs> That's what I'm saying He not gonna come to my party bro He ain't doing no free show So when I seen how viral that went I, I said man This shit about headlines And I'm not gonna invite him No way the way he grabbing On people's wives and stuff I, See why would everybody Want to point no, that out That I man don't. was skating his yeah. Ass off saying, and everything And they saying. wanna say that I'm just saying that nigga show was the uh, husband on. don't care so what do it oh, matter? Oh, he into that kind of stuff. I mean, he they laugh I'm about it apparently. Is, what's going on? I don't know. They late night out here at these different places. He was married and she did take him from somebody. I'm oh, my a, bad. I'm gonna be real with you, CEO. Uh, damn. I don't think you got nothing to worry about. Like when you built like us, a, because um, with Usher, just just with which with Mo, you know, I ain't Usher, Mr. Mr. Michael. He can come to my girl party. The only reason I'm saying that is because I know who I am mm. and if my. If my girl fuck with us, she lost already. Yeah, you feel me? yeah. Because us ain't yeah. built like me. I wish. But you, I'm a fan of us. I really want him to go and do it though, cause we going viral. You know, I need them streams. You know, he ain't gonna be rubbing up though. You know, he can just walk by real fast. Yeah, it's you a know? part of the show, y'all. Dang. It was. So, did you like it when he grabbed and pulled her close like that? And she it looked was, back like, see, it was oh, that, she that, that, like that's, oh, that's what I. Oh. Man, when she did her little smirk. That was. 
You like the daddy. So you no, he blaming all that. The woman don't. They straight go at the other woman. No, they she the one smile. They don't play. She smiled. That's I all I'm saying. I lied to y'all. Alicia was looking. She good. was fine. She, she, she looked so good. Ooh. So that boy over there. Uh, that boy over there. Uh, 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 he he doing his thing. He doing his job with her. That's what that means. If you got a good looking woman like that, yeah. and she still look good after all these years, that yeah. means Swiss Beach doing something right. You I ain't know, gonna lie to you. I'm gonna be honest though. We got a rule in my clique. It's called the mind your business. I'm just ready for Usher to mind his business. You feel me? Like if Usher was a part of my, if he was on tour with me in the trunk, and and, and the little broad walked up and you need to do that. See when my partner just try to jump in my, hey, where y'all from? I say mind your business. I, I'm the fastest nigga I'd have been, been towards. Like, mind your business, bro. Mind your business. You way over here. Get back over there, bro. It's three other friends. Why you want to ask mine where they from? That's real. That nigga asking this man's wife, uh, it's always that one person. Not this one. You better find another oh motherfucking person. Yeah. But I'm with you. I fuck with us. No, no. Shit. We got to check him at the door. And that's real. Th I mean, niggas bravado pop out all the time. And niggas gonna do be niggas. That's what, what. That's the way it goes. That's what R and B niggas used to do back in the day. See, that's the problem. Ain't nobody well, doing this no more. Nigga, please. So now it, it look. It don't look normal. Keith back in the Sweat, day, they used to slide down Sweat, the wild. When Keith, Keith Sweat, Sweat said, uh, "Come on, man, you may be young, but you ready." He was standing on that damn stage. He ain't touched nobody woman. No, yeah. no. I seen a video of Keith Sweat rubbing no. all over a woman. Long neck Keith Sweat? Yes. He was at the Apollo. Go Google it. Pull it up. That woman grabbed on everybody at the Apollo. No, I know I exactly that, that woman, that old ass woman. You can't get on the stage that old ass woman gonna handle your business. No, I'm she grabbing you. Uh, yeah, she just freaky like that. It's a lot. Y'all know they stole panties and bras and stuff. She freaky the... like that. Y'all wanna know something? What's that? I had this debate. A lot of people don't know this, but Usher performs thick in his Vegas set. He do like 20 seconds of thick. Um, so why he doing thick? I I got a call. Every time somebody go to Vegas, they send me this video of Usher doing thick. I got a videos of him performing a little 20 second segment with thick in it. I love it. Everybody like, man, you ain't going, you ain't going to try to try to get your money. No, Nick, y'all niggas be too urgent. I just want the relationship with us. That's right. You know what I mean? That's yes, right. Yes. So when I find us and we find chop it up, I'm gonna say, "Hey man, I'm DJ Toes. I had that thick song." He's gonna say, "Oh," and I'm gonna say, "I've been new. I don't want no money. I just want to be at a couple shows, you know." So what happened was, my little yeah, my birthday came around. She like, "Hey, I want to go see Usher." So I'm like, "Man, let me call." So I call B Cox. B Cox like. Oh yeah, that's nothing. I can set it up. Yeah, we we do the song and I, let me just let me just check on it. I'm like, that's hard. You know the debate me and my yeah had though. She was like, what if Usher comes up to me? Would you be mad? And I was like, I told her straight. I said, babe, that's Usher. You can do what you want to do, but you get Usher ain't built like me. You can have fun on stage. <laughs> now if you want to try it, go on, do what you do. But you will never be. You know he not built like me. I'm from, I'm from hey. I'm, that's real I'm talk like that. You gotta you gotta feel that when you go to that show. I ain't body going, <laughs> no. I ain't uh uh us nah man. Hey, get your moment. Cause I'm gonna have mine. Have your moment. Wow. Um man, so um the thing that I, I look at, man, is and I I, I really wanna know, man, out of all your son, like what's the biggest hit that you you know, that you you know what I'm saying, that you that you feel you've done? My biggest song to date, numbers wise, NBA Youngboy No Smoke. That damn NBA Youngboy gonna always do it. Yeah, but this, I think he got this one of his biggest songs too. Like he on, he probably got like three songs, four songs that's four times platinum. This one of, and this was the first one. So to me, it mean a lot. Just like producing Dear Mama for Tupac to me. You feel me? It was mm. one of them first hits early on. What do you think about rap? And 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 like I said, I mentioned NBA Youngboy a while ago. You know what I mean? The way rap is is it, the music itself is today. Like, where would you say it is? How would you look at it? You know, in retrospect of where we're at now. I strongly believe that hip hop is losing its its um I, I don't know the correct word, but it's losing its Damn, what's a word? Anybody got a good word identity. for me? Not identity. What's um? You know how 
I definitely get what you're saying. It's losing its credentials. I, I feel like the credit in hip hop is going somewhere different because back in the day, you couldn't be slow in rap. Mm-hmm. You feel me? Like we never said people probably had a problem with Pimp C, but they never said he was slow. These type of people get in the room and 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 talk some. They're gonna talk either sense or they're gonna talk some. Uh, Respect Like they're gonna be Talking about loyalty Or something They're gonna be talking about Something of substance They not just gonna be In the room Talking though mm -hmm. Right now In rap I think we just Full of like It's getting slower And slower and, and even when you Look at women If every time I see a woman She bent over Some people Look at that like Oh she bad I look at her Like she's slow mm -hmm. Like I hate to say this Ice Spice Might be slow Damn, with that little red afro. I ain't well, gonna come in because people get mad at me. No, they're gonna about kill it. me for what I just said. They they try to kill me too. So what happened? Wait a minute. Why is she slow? Because I I just see a well, bit over and over my put a hand right there. Right, I don't know. I'm saying that. I really don't know. I don't know she why she's slow. She's not rapping about nothing. All right, watch this. Is she is sexy red slow? I'm gonna tell you why sexy red. Not no, sexy no, red you slow. Know no, I'm gonna tell you why sexy no, red. No, I'm not trying to figure out what the hell going on. I know sexy red, so I can vouch. I've been working with sexy red since 2020. Okay. I'm going to tell you why Sexy Red ain't slow. Sexy Red is smart. Mm -hmm. She probably, Sexy Red might be just like me. She see what's going on and she just adapting. But I will say this. Sexy Red is very, very calculated. And Ice Spice may very well be calculated. But if I walked in the room with 20 women and I had one move every time, you want to know what my move was? If I come in the room with, with $20,000 and I pull it out, and I'm in front of my hoes flexing, right? And I never said nothing. After a while, wouldn't you think I was slow? Mm-hmm. Man, when these women just bent over, pat that pussy, and don't say nothing, I can't get you to open your mouth. I can't get you to tell me nothing. Man, I be scared. I just be like, damn. No substance. I'm tired. Man, I'm tired of you seeing Patrick. I'm tired of that, that pussy pat. Once I bust, once I get posting that clarity, that pussy pat don't mean nothing. Hmm. I'm gonna I'm be real with you. And she keep bending over at every concert, showing that thing. Man, you pat that pussy out there, nothing. There ain't nothing to talk about. I don't. I don't care. I, that pussy don't even mean nothing for the next forty five minutes. I got to get back in that vibe. So what I'm trying to tell you is, you got to know how to talk to me after that. After you patted that pussy, I liked it. After that nut, we got to go somewhere better, and you better have a conversation. You got to get out. But you don't think she doing that just for the for the for the craft, my nigga? God dang, you know she and I have craft. She's right, an artist. Stop. I will say I like Ice Spice. She's an artist. I liked it. I liked it that one song. Sexy she Red had. is an artist too, and she she ski eating all so that. So do you consider people like that an artist? Because me, when I when you say artist, you have to have bars and all kind of. Y'all gonna make me Facetime. So you said sexy. she don't have it. Call her, cause that's my girl. I be on her. I always got to defend. Yeah, yeah, she always. Gonna, she gonna hang up in my face. She's real hood. She gonna wear on fucking cops. She gonna sleep. <laughs> get away. I love real. I love her too. Well, and I have no hate for Ice Spice. I'm I'm just speaking from people like Ice Spice. You might be very intelligent. I'm talking about the women who see you, and they they take what you do, and they think that that's all you're worth. So that's all they become. Ice Spice, you may be very intelligent. I'm saying every now and then. When you get a chance, let them know that because these women be fucking and, and guys too. Let me talk about you niggas because it's niggas that it's, it's your Kodaks. It's niggas that want to be like Kodak and all they do is mirror what Kodak do and they forget that, hey, Kodak might have some sense. So Ice, all I'm saying is have, have some sense for them people who don't know how to be leaders and um, take from you and still be they self. It's a lot of people that take from you, become who you are, and forget that you got a side that you don't show that might be very intelligent. Kodak, NBA young boy, all you niggas. That's why I like what Gates started doing when he started talking. It was like, damn, we starting to get this, this, this Gates telling us real shit. He ain't just being he ain't just doing crazy shit and then being quiet. I think y'all gotta stop withholding that intelligence and let the world know that y'all got more substance to y'all. And as long as we keep doing dummy shit and rap. This shit gonna get slower and slower. When 
when Lil, uh, when Lil JJ from up the street who ride a bike see Kodak on drugs, he going to say, I can rap too. And when he want to rap, he not going to put no real effort in. He going to go get him four, five Percocets. He going to go to the studio. And he going to say some bullshit and it might go hard because the producer. Shout out to me. Shout out to all the niggas who making them fire ass beats. The beat might be hard and he might mumble on that hoe and say the right thing. No, nigga, I got old okay, cash smacking on they ass. And that shit might hit. And when it hit, guess what? Now it's, a, it's another nigga who just dropped out in fifth grade. He gonna run a rap when, when, he, when he get old enough and get some money. And this shit just getting slower and slower and slower. And the slower rap get, guess what? Anybody can come. That's why we ain't got no motherfucking, ain't no, ain't no great wild in this bitch. We ain't never denied nobody and said, hey, bro, you ain't from the hood. You can't do this. No, we let them. We let them white boys who who not from the hood carry Drakes and hang Takashi. We let Takashi be a street nigga with us. <laughs> he ain't never did. Boom, Takashi in the streets now, and it looked good because rap don't got nobody to slap the shit out of Takashi. Say, bitch, you ain't from here. Stop playing. Guess what we did? We said, oh, this is gonna make money. Mm-hmm. Do you realize, and I'm just sitting here thinking about it, you got all, your necklace nice, you always dressing nice, you come over to Boss Talk, you got a big old house, you know, niggas seeing you, you know, you're on the internet, you're walking outside in these big old houses, and them niggas up on the East Coast and West Coast see you niggas in Texas. There was one guy that even commented, it was Young Jock even, Young Jock said them Houston niggas, man, they got the car, they rolling up, they got money, they there's something about the way they, you know, sustain, like... Do you think you know? Do you do you realize people watching that and looking at you and yeah. and, and looking at how you guys are thriving in in today's times? You, Lil Kiki, Slim Thug, all of y'all, man, look good. Yeah. I mean, hanging in there. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. My boy, uh, G Luck can be done with the studio. Like niggas Crazy. is really getting to it. Yeah. Like when you look at the way the success is down there, Bun B with Trill Burgers, That's you know what crazy. I mean? Like, like you got to start thinking about that. All of the people in the success, yeah. Carl Crawford with, with 1501, I'm being real, Megan Thee Stallion, all the stuff that's going on with, uh, even, I mean, when you look at all of those guys, bro, right. including yourself, in Houston, H-Town, you niggas is thriving. Now that shit crazy. You know Beyonce, my ain't he? <sighs> I know, man. Is that the reason everybody thriving, nigga? <laughs> because of Beyonce. Like, yeah, that's what I'm saying. Did she send the blueprint to Miami Zoo? All right, hold on. <laughs> that nigga Beyonce crazy. Put him on the map. Nah, <laughs> nah, I didn't. Sauce <laughs> Walker, he down there, he got 57 artists. You know what I'm saying? Like, a uh, beat king is a lot of niggas down there, the bro. I had to shake the room. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> I just had to shake the room, but let me explain. Let me explain. So Beyonce ain't never did nothing for me. So let me, I was just letting you know in the correct time that she was my enemy. But listen, okay. <laughs> I thought it fit right there. But, <laughs> but hear me out. What a lot of people don't know is um, you named a lot of people. I don't know how, but I will tell you one thing about a Texas nigga. This hustle in us, we got a lot to prove because a lot of us don't. It ain't like we had help, you know? When I look at a nigga like B. King, he ain't have a lot of help. When I look at a nigga like Walt, he ain't have a lot of help. Kiki, Slim, all of, everybody you named it. It ain't like we just be going touch each other and be like, hey, bro, plug me with this person. Like, in Texas, we got a lot of this. Niggas be like, I can't tell you how I did this. So what I will tell you is that hustle crazy because once you do it yourself you a monster see a lot of niggas got all kind of outsourced help and they never know how to do it again you ever seen a nigga sell a brick you like damn that nigga got rid of a brick and he got rid of that brick but he might got rid of it in, in a way that was very very creative and he didn't do it well with us when we get a hit chances are we we went and paid the right people we went and worked it at the djs we went and did all of the groundwork, so when it's time to get another one, we know how to do it. We know who not to spend money with. Man, we be doing that shit. When Kiki say self-made, I definitely can relate. Like, I be want to, I ain't even, I be want to rep his brand because of how well it resonates with me. Wow. I ain't really had no help. And at this point, I be telling my, my manager, Joe, I don't give a fuck about it either. I, niggas be, oh, yeah, I could have. I don't give a fuck what you could have did, nigga. I know how to do what I know how to do on my own, and what I know how to do get me a, it get me pretty far. 
Wow. I, I I commend you, bro, and congratulate you guys for sustaining like y'all do down for there. Real. Like I said, don't get me wrong, you got some niggas in Dallas like Lil Run and Mother F, you know what I'm saying? Oh, you right. got some you got some niggas here that's really like like top notch, you know mm -hmm. what I'm saying? When it comes Big X, he down here causing hell. Big X if you got that's the new niggas. I didn't really mention Big X cause if I mention Big X, I gotta mention D Baby and, and that Mexican O T because mm -hmm. that's the newer you have set in a place that's Solidified. You know, I did uh, uh, D Baby biggest song right now. Really? Me and D Baby been working for about four years, but that nigga hard, he's bro. Super hard, and and I was on tour with X. X cool to the motherfucker. Yeah, yeah, I seen you guys together. Ot cool. We got some shit about to drop. Uh, man, it's just what I do like about Texas is once we get what we need to get, we will stop and and we will do a little collaborating. You feel me? Sometimes it get weird. Niggas get weird because somewhere down the line, niggas be thinking they're in competition. Mm -hmm. That shit be weird. But to me, it be like, bro, with me, I don't got that problem because I be feeling like a lot of people don't compare with me. And it ain't like I think I'm better than you. I just don't think you my direct competition. You feel me? So it be weird. But for the most part, when we can get off our high horses, get off that ego, and we do collab, Man, I tell you, like a nigga like me and B King, we don't miss together. Wow, I want to ask you about Jay Prince, man, because when you think about that whole move, that whole dynamic down there, Jay Prince was one of the first, the first mm -hmm. to come out and really set the mode that we here doing music and we here to stay. He that guy with the ghetto boys and just the way that they all <laughs> came together to make that movement. Mm -hmm. How big is that for Houston? That's huge. And if it wasn't, I would never say nothing because you don't play with Jay Prince. Damn. Yeah. <laughs> That's stupid as that. No, but Jay just a cool nigga, though, when it comes down to the move. I'm talking about the action of the music, nigga. Man. You know what I'm saying? We got to be real. He might do this or that, but the nigga is Man. smart, and the nigga put it down yeah. for our whole, like, like Texas without him. That it ain't Master P say he wouldn't even be doing this if it wasn't for him. I respect Jay and I just don't want a public service. No, that's what I'm saying. I mean, <laughs> he like I ain't saying hey, that. Hey, <laughs> little DJ. <laughs> <laughs> now nah, what I will say though Love is Jay Prince, man. All right, you want to know a crazy story? This is crazy. Nobody know this. Okay. So I'm from a little small town called Brookshire, right? Okay. Jay Prince got a ranch in Sunnyside where I used to stay. Sorry for telling all your business, Jay. Big ass ranch. I say ass ranch, right? Ever since I was a baby, you pass by that bitch and say Prince Ranch, right? Ooh. So when you see it, I'm like, eight, hey, wanna be a rapper? I see Prince Ranch, uh, Prince Ranch, and I know about Jay Prince at eight. And it's this big ass mansion in the back, right? So you can see the mansion, but you can barely see it. That bitch looks like a look. But you know it's a mansion though, because it's so far. So every, when I turn 15, every time I record a song, I go put my CD in the mailbox. I go pass out the house, hoping one day he get that bitch and hear it, right? Never did. I'm happy he didn't. Anyway, <laughs> <laughs> I fuck with Jay. I'm just saying, I'm here to pity. I be getting a lot of money. I'm, I'm glad I, you know, I made it here alone. But what I'm going to tell you is he been influencing the game since I was a baby. Wow. So even to be where he at now, and shout out to his kids, because even a lot of people be trying to discredit them, but to see what they done did in the game, like, Man, I don't give a fuck what you think. I tell y'all, Beyonce, my ain't it, but you can't pass this family shit. You can't just be, it don't work like that. You can't say, this my nephew. I'm finna put him on. You know how many people done try that? It don't work like that. Look at little, little Romeo. P did it. He had a wave. He had a, you can't just hand. I'm saying, Master little P. Romeo. P couldn't hand out P. You feel me? He can no. give him, he can give him some, he, can, he gave him some Miller, but he can't give him. Master P. Yeah. So when I see somebody like his kids and what they done done, like, you know, with Jazz and some of the things he's been successful at or, or with Junior, man, it's like a lot of people might say what they say, but I mean, I'm just, I'm a person who knows that I can hang with Kevin Gates for the rest of my life. If it ain't in me, he can't hand it off to me. You can't hand it off to you. You got that exactly right, bro. I, I think that's so dope the way you just explained that too because a lot of times it's hard for kids to be uh how they say raised up hip hop what's that little show they had oh, growing, yeah, up, growing hip -hop. up hip hop it's hard as hell growing up hip hop <laughs> you know what I'm saying growing up hip hop shit yeah, that's another level bro they they be speaking on like Lotto and the show and all of that and I'm like hey y'all 
if Lotto wasn't built like that, it wouldn't have happened. You can't. Mm-hmm. I, I, I could put anybody on TV. I got friends that didn't fell out with me because they be like, man, introduce me to Gates. And I'd be like, bro, I can introduce you to Gates. You can meet him. He can do the world for you. But if it's not in you, you won't survive. You ain't never. Hey, it's niggas that want my, when it come to them shows, it's niggas that, it's niggas that be, man, why he get the da da da? I'd be like, bro, you want my, go. Go where I go. I go where you go. Let me go. I go. I open it up. You, 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 you go right. Man, ask me what that shit look like. Man, you got it got to be in you, bro. It got to be in you, man. When you think about, you know, you said something on the show a while back. You, you and you, I don't even know if you've been working with him lately, but Fred O'Bangs and being in the studio mm-hmm. with Fred O'Bangs. But even with NBA Young Boy, you just said, I know y'all might. He, you probably had to ship it to him because he on house arrest. You right. probably didn't go in the studio with NBA Young Boy, did you? Who back in the day? Yeah. No, I've been in the studio. You did, yeah, yeah. Like did, Couple times. you, you said. I remember you said it was tough with the way that. The young, them young, young bulls is like, mm-hmm. like, like. How was it being in studio with NBA Young Boy? He see when I when I was in the studio, like I could tell he didn't grew up. But when I was in the studio with him back in the day, he was just he was wild. He was wild. Like I I just went in the studio. I can't say everything because nobody. This the conversation that nobody know. I was in the studio with him and Moneybag Yo at the same time. Wow. And this is. Early money bag, early NBA young boy. So while I'm, I was in the studio with them for like a week, and it was so crazy. I've been in the studio. Let me give you. Let me give you, Let me tell you how crazy it was. I got NBA young boy, biggest record at that time. We end up working on the song. I play some beats. Pull it up. Boom. We pull it up. Right. He finished that. Pull up another one. Finished that. In the midst of that, I'm in the room. I'm making the beats, send them to the computer. He's like, man, fuck all that shit. Put some Southside 808 Mafia beats on. I'm in the room. <laughs> <laughs> hey, Bag look at me like. <laughs> but, you know, he really ain't. See, Bag ain't say shit because he, you know, he he old. He, he, he adult like me. He kind of like. And I'm just like, damn. But that's how wild it is. And at the time. I personally, I'm just like, hey man, this ain't my this ain't my battle. You feel me? I, I didn't see one thing about me when I win. I'm trying to win some more with you, but if I didn't got my championship ring, man, I ain't gotta sit there and stay on the team, man. I ain't signing no contract or nothing of that. I can I can move around and I can find me shit. Niggas was on my ass. I, you don't do that. Hey, I make another one. What bang it? Come on, bang. That's what I want. Yeah, what's Let's the difference busy. between being in there with Fredo Bangs and being in there with NBA Youngboy? Fredo Bangs was wild at one point. That's what I'm saying because he was wild into it at one point. <laughs> See, it ain't no comparison. I love both of them. I'm not gonna For do sure. none of that. But I will say, when me and Bangs start working, see, Youngboy was a little younger to where I don't think Youngboy he was so young and wild. I don't think he knows me. Okay. That's crazy to say. You know how wow. you know how you young, you wild, you got so many people around, it's like you don't you don't know. He can't remember me. I wasn't a big deal or nothing like that. I was just a person who did work and did my job. Fredo was somebody who respected my work and my okay. job. So I got it. When Two I, different time periods. That but also Fredo, wow, but he not so consumed it's like he had his street niggas with him and he knew who they was so he also knew these my street niggas but this the nigga i can't do business with in these rooms right here it was so many niggas the way you didn't know who was who you might have had your street niggas and you knew who they was but these rooms when you this big you got 10 niggas with money bag too that you don't know it's just like man here go another nigga with some ice on his chain if, if I could change everything all over again, I would have walked in them bitches looking like CeeLo Green. At, I mean, not CeeLo, uh, Jermaine Dupree at the Super Bowl. I, already had, I did something to make myself stand out. Like, bitch, you going to remember me. <laughs> but I was forgettable. Let me just say that. That's hard. That's hard, but it's real. And, and, I, and it's good that you take notice to how, you know, who you are. Your self-evaluation is real. You know, mm-hmm. self-awareness. 
that's a real thing and, and I, I think that's hard that you look back reassess and say you know if I did this because now when you're in those situations you know how to conduct and what you need to do to be yeah. successful I'm start showing up with cowboy hats on on the ass ice that no shirt either Nigga, I'm not want to be in the studio with me, man. Hey, get this nigga up out the studio, man. <laughs> man, let me ask you this, man. Um, uh, we lost a real one down there, a uh, big pokey, man. Mm -hmm. Um, uh, the sensei, like, like when you seen that, cause it happened on the internet, and I know it messed with Kiki bad because that was his boy, that was his right hand man. Like they always was together on interview videos, doing their thing. You know what I'm saying? Their era, you know, mm -hmm. SUC and all. Like, what did you, what did you think when you seen that happen? I, I hated that shit and I thought it was fake at first. I I was hoping it was fake. Then when I found out it was real, I learned a I learned a lot. Like some people probably took it like for what it was on some internet shit. But for me when certain people die, I just realized how short life is. Wow. Yeah, me too. And I'm a I'm a big pokey fan. Like I'm a real I'm a DJ, so uh keep my name out your mouth. And Brenham at a club called Blackwater 15 years ago used to be uh, what, what fucking, uh, in, that was like our NBA Youngboy record of, or, or, or whoever got the hottest song gonna wear a Drake record right now. That was that bitch that used to keep my name, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, so yeah. when Poke died, I was just like, damn. And you know, Poke wasn't old or nothing like that. Mm -mm. You feel me? But, um, you know, for the legends we do got, I love being able to call a Kiki. I called Kiki came to my birthday, my birthday party. Yeah, I seen that. Week. I seen it. I told him to his face. I told Kiki, I say, man, y'all was the best gaslighters. Wow. And he was like, what you mean, Chose? I was like, well, I listen to um, Fat Pat if you only knew. In that second verse, he was he was he was worse than me, and I didn't know that them old niggas was gaslighting like that, cause mm -hmm. cause they say we gaslight. But he like, if you could be my baby, baby, if you keep it real. Yeah. And he talking about how he got another bitch and this bitch. And I'm like, man, y'all niggas gaslight, man. I see where I get this shit from. Man, Pat, Pat, man, you got to understand. A lot of, <laughs> lot, of, lot of people, a lot of people to be real with you, they, they tend to forget that. They'll say, man, Zero, he was the first one singing like that. But really, to me, it was Fat Pat. Man, how say I'm chilling you know with saying? my bro? Mm -hmm. And Kill you already know. know. For real. Yeah. These, yeah, them niggas what, was singing early, for real, man. For real. I was trying to tell Kiki, like, bro, I probably wouldn't have been a hoe if I wouldn't have listened to y'all music as a child. Cause y'all, y'all taught me how to gaslight and tell this woman everything will be fine if you just stay down. That's a lie. That's a lie. <laughs> <laughs> That's a lie. <laughs> but I'm good at it. <laughs> And it's all, it's all them niggas' fault. I heard from Kiki, I say, man, I looked in his eyes and said, hey, man, y'all niggas started this gaslighting shit, bro. Now I'm out here gaslighting, but it's your fault. Wow. Thank you, Black. What? <laughs> you, you stupid as hell. <laughs> Let me ask you this, man, because you down there, man, and you watch the game because you you're a student of the game. Um, when it come down, you know, power a white boy. Mm -hmm. But when you see him, when I first heard him, I thought he was black, to be honest with you. I'm right. being real. I thought he was a black dude. I heard him on the radio when I mm -hmm. first heard him. Mm -hmm. I met him. We've hung out a few times. Uh, like, when you see him and the way he is with the culture down in Houston and what he's done, what do you think as far as when it comes down to Pow Wow, you know, and his, his movement? I love Pow Wow, and I feel like I know I said what I said about how everybody shouldn't be accepted, but I feel like Pow Wow, one of them people that's of hip hop. I didn't think you about you said that for sure. So when I say that, I'm speaking on people that's not of hip hop, that's just benefiting off of it. I think Pow Wow is of hip hop. He should be, and he is accepted because we know he's <coughs> of, you, you know what I'm saying? He, nigga talking about I'm on that 5 9 South Lee. Anybody that know about 5 9 South Lee know you shouldn't be on 5 9 South Lee. Baby, he's someone, he too close to have a star. My cousin stay over there right by him. He too close to have a star. He too close to, to the... So when he said that, I'm like, he he he's just talking. You know, and I, I'm a big fan of um one of my favorite songs is um just the other day with him and uh Camille, right? Man, Camille a beast too. So as I'm listening, it's it's like they shit was Man, Pow Wow was rapping too. Oh and yeah, what I'm for saying sure. Is, he had to be. 
man, we shouldn't just be accepting any kind of dumb shit. But when you ask about Paul, I love Paul. Um, early on, before I was anybody, Paul gave me a verse. And wow. Respected me just like Kiki did, um, Slim did. Like, I'm, I'm just, you know, it took some of the legends a while. But I just be happy that it came about because I ain't got no negative, no envy for these niggas. You know, at early on, I might have had a, I might have felt the way about like a row or something. But when we finally met and I finally went to row house, it came down. We talked and I realized like, man, man, them niggas, them niggas wasn't hating on me. They ain't had no problem with me. Them niggas was just in their bag like I'm in right now. And when you think about all the stuff that's going down, man, when it come down to, you know, uh, just... The industry, bro, you you be with Kevin Gates, right? And you mm -hmm. guys have been touring together for how long now? A few years, right? Three years. Three years. How do you how did that even happen? Um man, good relationships, man. Like it's some a person like Gates, he um we start working real closely early and the more work we did, it turned into a moment where I think at this point, he know that I, I'm i pretty invested, you feel me? And this ain't just no, oh, man, I'm just trying to be a hot producer and work with the hottest people. Nah, we we really like brothers. We family at this point, you feel me? I call him big bro because that's how I see him. Um, and when it came to tour, it's just like our, four, our first tour, the energy was so correct that it's like I knew that we would tour again. And at this point, I feel like we'll tour again. You wow. feel me? Yeah. So that's just how it went. Um, actually, a blessing though, because ain't nobody ever asked me out of all the people I didn't ever work with. And I'm talking about I didn't shook some people back, and I didn't piss some people on. And I'm talking about ain't nobody ever wanted me to be in the same light as them. Wow. Wow. So when he he didn't even it, this ain't just come on tour. This last tour in the middle of his set. He brung me out. He'll go change clothes and he'll bring me out. And when he brung me out, chose, he go, my crowd, I want you to do whatever you want to do with him. And he'll let me perform for like three minutes while he go change clothes. And he'll come back out. But this is at his peak. Yeah. Man, ain't no. I done, I done put a lot of people in some great places. When it come down to like peak at the hottest moment, why they, who they are, it ain't too many people that ain't ever they they was always too scared. They always felt like, man, I can't let I can't embrace you and and give you this because you might get on harder than me. Not understanding that no matter how strong I get, I'm still gonna get. In the, I could be fucking Kanye West and you can bring up Kevin Gates and I'm never gonna be like next question. I'm gonna get in that bitch and say, man, Gates turned me up, showed me something I ain't never seen. I elevated from there. Thank you, Kevin Gates. I owe you the world. Because that's just the way I am. I'm a country nigga who ain't never had shit. So everything is appreciated. Mm -hmm. I can go on motherfucking Club Shay Shay right now. He can mm -hmm. say, man, you know he's CEO? That's my nigga. Mm. He wild. We're going to talk to him. <laughs> he's CEO. Wow. You know that nigga? You feel me? But I'm never going to. Next question. We want to talk about ECO. We are we, we in Shay Shay. And that's what's wrong with the world. Ain't too many niggas embracing niggas. You feel me? Uh, you 100% right, man. I think that's something that that that's something that can help you or hurt you because there's a lot of rooms where people are blocking people out, trying to figure out ways to stop people's success when they really can't. Hey, listen it's to a me. fake perception. Listen to me. It's some lives I changed. Lives. I can honestly say I didn't did some stuff for Gates, but I didn't build Kevin Gates. I built some people. And when I tell you, I don't know the last time we had a conversation. Wow. You feel me? Let alone, I'm about to go on this tour. I want you to da 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 I don't give a fuck if it's press play on the CD player. You know what I'm saying? It's some people that really, I, can't, I, I just don't know where their humanity went. You feel me? And when you meet somebody like Kevin Gates who kind of like, Unselfish and it's almost like damn, bro. I, one this nigga told me some shit that fucked me up one time. He said, "Little brother, you think I'm doing this because I'm trying to da da da?" He just nah, bro. I want to see you win like I'm winning. And wow. 
when he said it, it wasn't just him saying it. It was the actions that made me believe it. Mm. A lot of niggas be, oh, nigga, I want you to win. Or everybody say that shit and they be like, nigga, I clearly need your fucking help right here. Mm -hmm. Can you do it? And nigga, how what you were saying? Nigga try to, nigga try to act like they can't hear you. You know no, what I mean? real. You, you feel me? It's people that, I didn't, I didn't think that I had people deny me until I got so hot the way it was like they had to do it. Wow. I just want to, I got to ask you, like, Kevin Gates is a different type of animal in that booth. Mm -hmm. When he rapping on a song, man, the way that nigga is delivering and getting around them damn verses, the way he getting around them damn beats, right. it's not really many that's really doing it like him if you really, mm -hmm. really listen to music. Right. It ain't really a lot of people that rap like that, bro. Like, what do you think about the way he deliver his music? Uh, the verses and he nasty. I ain't even talking about oh. that part. I'm talking about the music. My bad. You nasty. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Sorry, mama. <damn. laughs> What's crazy about Gates is I didn't been in the studio with him on numerous events. Right? I come in that house so lit. It'd be a time where I'm my best, and I'm thinking, "Ooh, I'm finna come in this bitch and slide." Man, that nigga so good. When I say this, I mean like it'll be a time where he ain't did three songs in a, in a month, right? He come in that bitch in some some, some Nike joggers and a Nike sweatsuit, and and he got the, he got every other thing on his mind. He got he got street shit on his mind. He ain't even talking about no music. He'll talk my ear off about street shit, women, whatever. It ain't never talking about music, right? This see niggas don't know how to be friends with Kevin Gates. He don't want to talk about music. That's the worst thing you can do is bring up. Hey, I got this beat for me. He might walk off on me if I say I got a beat for you. Wow. He don't want to hit it. But when it's time to go in that booth, this nigga walk in the booth. I'm like, man, he finna find the record. He getting that bitch. And I tell you, the first song we did was a single. And I was like, damn, that nigga. First song, go, go. It's just, he, he rock like that. He different. He, he a different animal, but I, I it's just like, it's like with my country. I always tell niggas when that shit in you, you ain't gotta practice. You feel me? You do practice, but that's in him. When he releases feelings and he releases experiences, it's always gonna be a move. We can tell. We can feel it. That's why I say he wrote the Bible. He wrote his Bible. You know, when I hear his music, I feel like it's his Bible. Wow. I think I think he's very, very, very uh, articulate with what he's doing. He's, mm -hmm. he, I mean, you know, he. I think him, his family, the way he is as a man, I, I can respect it. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. uh, he take care of business with his kids. That's what the more gangster than anything that I ever seen him so, doing. Going gangsta. to prison, all that stuff. That's cute. Yeah. But when you take care of your family, that's gangster. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? For so real. I respect him in that aspect. For real. The way he deal with his kids. I seen his <laughs> daughter. Driving, he drive that motherfucker, drive that, you know, mm -hmm. like like I'm that nigga. Yeah. I, be, I already did that. I yeah. got four kids, <laughs> and they all could drive since they were nine. So when I seen the nigga doing it, yeah. I said, oh, he done took a page from you CEO book. Wow. That nigga out here, really out here, you know, teaching his kids how to, you know, kick it out here because you don't, you can't take life for granted because mm -hmm. life is too short. Mm -hmm. You see what I'm saying? So that's the game for me when I see him doing that kind of stuff. That's gangster. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? He really, one day I hung with him. We hung, we was, we was together about three days, right? He got his kids with him, though. It's just me, him, and his kids, right? It's crazy. No bodyguard, nothing. We're going through airports and everything. And it's so raw because it ain't one conversation that he had with me that he couldn't have in front of his kids. That's real. Like, they they so goddamn gangster, too, that he just had on regular conversations. And it's like, they not like, you know, it ain't one of them things where they sheltered. Mm -hmm. They're not blown away by anything he say. He say some crazy wild shit, and it's just like they know, but they they it ain't gonna be nothing that just alarm them when they get to that age. They gonna mm -hmm. understand and they gonna know real real world situations. So I, I definitely commend them for the, how he move, and, and they not man. Them, them kids very intelligent too. Very intelligent. very intelligent. Well, let me ask you this because I seen you come in. You had a black bag with you when you came in. Mm -hmm. I know kind of what you have in that bag. Right. But one thing I thought about, I'm like, do that nigga got them them Trump shoes in that bag? Nah, I ain't got no Trump shoes. <laughs> I 
<laughs> you know, Trump got these seen them shoes. Yeah, yeah. Them. You know, I didn't know if the nigga might have. I said, oh, this nigga ain't got them Trump <laughs> shoes. Nah, I ain't. You know I ain't got them. They four hundred dollars, and uh, he uh, he he sold out in one day. Yeah. I said, damn, I wonder who bought them Trump shoes. Damn, no, <laughs> because they say we love them. Oh, they, they want to say the niggas. <laughs> That's what they really they want got a to tea say. They on them. So, see, I, ain't <laughs> I didn't know if you had them. They go with a red bottom. I'm going to be honest with you. <laughs> That's why they did it. It's like. Smoke kind of clean. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's why he said I'm going to be honest. <laughs> no, <laughs> no. I was going to say it's certain niggas I don't talk about. Oh, yeah. You want them? Trump, one of them. Because I don't understand which side I'm on for real. I don't either. And I don't want to be. I'm a, But I'm in a fashion store. So when you pull a shoe out, it's a different world for me. It ain't got nothing to do with Trump. I'm looking at the design of the shoe, when the shoe came out, don't, what color it is. Don't replicate them bitches in. Get your money I out. I thought about that. Me, we already talked about that. Like as soon as I seen it, I said, let me get the wooks. Yeah. yeah. Don't 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 let me get the wooks. That nigga been finessing on us all that time. Yeah. You, you gotta, gotta go flip and that hoe and put a, me and my brother boss okay. talk on that hoe. Keep now, the tea. On the, you know, now I don't want the tea. I want the B now. I'm gonna tell you why. That's what they been doing. They do it all the time. Nah, you don't want to really whoop. I want you to get your money out the nigga up the score. Them niggas been up the score on us oh, all so day. So go on and just make make the whole yeah, shoot. Yeah, make Trump come down here and sue your ass. Yeah, then then you making money. Hell yeah. Cause they they sold out in one day. Shit, you think them niggas ain't been doing that shit though? That shit crazy. They you saw that Stanley it. Cup. Yeah. <laughs> up the score on Trump. Up the score on Trump. Trump, if you let me find me a distribute, I'm up and score on your ass. <laughs> Man, I, I, listen, man. You you one of them guys, man. That every time you come out with with, with you, Kiki, um, like I said, little Ronnie, Mother Elf, it's mm -hmm. certain people that when y'all put out songs, man. Like when I look at the way y'all deliver them, like y'all, I mean, you independent, right? Mm -hmm. And these y'all are all independent, but y'all make it look so you know so professional mm -hmm. when y'all right. bring out your projects the and stuff. Mm -hmm. The way y'all push it online. Uh, explain to some of the younger cats trying to figure it out what they got to do when they trying to put out a project. Well, I think the first thing is everybody you just name is very, very passionate about music. I mean, I think over time, niggas like Ronnie, niggas like me get discouraged, but we always passionate first. So even Kiki, we all get discouraged, but as long as you passionate, you never just throwing out no shit that you ain't proud of. So first things first, young nigga, be proud of what the fuck you about to drop. Wow. Second thing, second, um, man, plan it. Ain't nothing wrong with a little planning. You know, I know you niggas don't plan no dates, but you better plan your release. You feel me? Um, and then when you get a little older, you're going to realize you better start planning them dates. You feel me? Your fans need to feel just as special as your woman. You feel me? Your woman need a date plan, and your fans need that release plan. And, and go on, get you, line your content up. Figure out what you're going to do, how you going to do it, when you're going to drop it. Um, what should be first, what should be second, how you gonna get the fans involved. Just put a little strategy in this shit, man. This shit ain't it's not meant to be done so freestyled, bro. You ain't you ain't ride wave yet. You ain't finna just sneak this bitch out and blow up, bro. Piss some piss some motherfucking thought in that shit and then, you know, come over here and get a beat. Nigga, I ain't gonna knock you across the head, but I am gonna knock you across the neck. Goddamn. <laughs> come over here, I got them beats, you know? <laughs> And other than that, man, just <laughs> I don't know if I, you knock that nigga across the neck, that's gonna hurt too. Shit. Not the head, but the neck. <laughs> the neck gonna hurt you like that. Shit. <laughs> you might kill that nigga. The nigga that Google <laughs> right. They Google him right there. They juggle him, but they Google him. That's gonna hurt worse than Oh than my god, no. You don't wanna hit that nigga in the neck, my nigga. <laughs> <laughs> I think that pain might be a little bit worse. <laughs> But, but I get what you're saying. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> man, move with purpose, man. If, if you move with some purpose, bro, you might actually. Come out with a win. Um, do some marketing though. Like I tell you, I'm gonna tell everybody the secret. Like y'all think it's the song. It is the song. That's first. But after that, bro, I know a million niggas with hits that just can't do no marketing and they never gonna win. Wow. I want to ask you about. I see, we mentioned Lil Kiki a few times on here. Um, when I look at just like the people who be job, I seen be was it uh. Be legit did that with uh these are older niggas. See, you okay. you a young nigga. You don't know nothing about the old niggas. That's what mm -hmm. it is. When they talk about the be legit, big crit. Mm -hmm. He came and did something to him. Do you ever work with like the those guys too? Or just used to know G's, nigga? Uh you I, got, <laughs> Houston OGs. Cause really you work like, with a lot of them. It's just like Houston OGs. Um I love Big Crit. I tried to work with him for a long time and I just never could. Y'all never did work together either. It was like a 
it was hard to get to Crit, and I'm a big Crit fan. Like mm-hmm. he got a song called "Some Days." That I know it's hard like, to get to him because I've been trying to interview him, and I, I'm telling you, I done not reach out, did things, niggas just with him. Yeah. I didn't did all that. Ain't got, ain't got a damn call. I know I gave up. I don't give a fuck no more. You gave up? Okay. Maybe I need to give up too big crit. I'm giving up, nigga. I fuck with your old crit. Yeah, we Texas stand for you. You you say yeah. you like Texas, but you ain't been on boss talk, nigga. Nigga, you know we, crit, we love hell, you. You're- we love you, crit, but a nigga just don't nigga don't give a fuck if we ever work, and I know you don't give a fuck either. So <laughs> We just gonna be too rich ass <laughs> nigga and get to it, nigga. Real yeah. talk. I'm a fan of We I'm gonna a travel shit. around this hoe. You yeah. know what I'm saying? We gonna do our thing. All I'm saying, all me and ECO saying, when you come down here to fuck with propane and liquor, come on now, it come ain't on now, make a stop and fuck with some old niggas. That's, That's right. Because it's some real niggas down there. Tell you know that because you you took that sauce really from Pimp Neil, man. See, nigga. I ain't say all that. Oh no, Crip, Pimp, he said it. I'm just saying I no, ain't, no, no, Crit. I know what you're saying. Niggas, I'm man. not going in all you that. You can't. You, you, you was a producer, and I don't want I to, can. But what I will say is, you know what I'm saying? Is, like this, Texas. What man. I will say is, fucking with me, you'd have had ten more of them. Oh here. damn, you know them hoes would have went. Dude. See, I can't say that. I don't yeah, make music. I can't. See, we over here with two. I can't. <laughs> We'd have been turned that into something. <laughs> so we go. Turn this into- <laughs> <laughs> nah, you, I think Chris is one of the live is dopest one. That's why we're talking about him. I'm also a David Banner fan, too, when he did that with Flip. Like, I watch all that stuff, man. I was going to ask about you about, uh, no, nah, I'm asking about Mike Jones and them stealing that song, using that song. What would you do if somebody used your damn beat? What song? They used that uh, Steel Tipping beat. It was, uh, uh, what's the boy name? Uh, damn. The young nigga, he got letters for his name. That's most of them niggas. NLE Chuck? Yeah, that's him. You heard it too. Oh, you talking about with NLE? Yeah. Was Mike Jones yeah, shit. Yeah, yeah. And Mike uh, Jones was kind of upset about it. And, and well, he didn't want him just using it. It ain't just him. It's been a few artists that use that still tipping beat. Like, we use it. I got a hit record in that. Like a little, it's, it's a nice record. Did you get it clear? Me and Puda. Uh, I think. Do you I'm, need to clear records? Yeah, you do. I think what NLE went wrong. They be it's two it's like two three versions of that same song, and a lot of people be clearing the wrong one. Mm. That's hard. Yeah, so mm-hmm. a lot of times when you're doing samples, you gotta look to see if it's an OG or the OG. And then I think in this situation, see the record I'm on is Puda Young Puda record. I'm just a feature, so whoever he cleared it with, if he didn't, if he did, that's their business. But I think he did because it it was all over the radio. You feel me? It went like. Top 10 or some shit. So, for NLE, I think whoever produced it probably just didn't do it. And, and you know, a lot of times them niggas don't be want to pay homage for real. And that, the homage be simple. It be like, reach out, try to see who to get this clear through if you feel like it's a hit. And then once you do that, also show some respect to these bigger mm-hmm. niggas. You know what I mean? To these these older cats. Like, you ain't got to act like it's your record. There ain't nothing wrong with saying... This shit was very inspiring. Mike Jones, appreciate him. Da, da, da. It ain't nothing wrong with like that's all them old niggas be want sometimes is a little mm-hmm, respect for mm-hmm. their intellectual property. So I don't be hesitating to get that. Now when a nigga do too much and that ain't good enough, cause I done had some niggas that still wanted to go there with me, and it'd be like, man, fuck that record, scrap. He would have never got my shit took down. I took it down for him. Oh damn, that's hard. Oh, you that hard? I got more hits. You feel me? But I didn't. I didn't sit in the studio with like Uncle Luke. I paid Uncle Luke. Nobody noticed. Two, wow. two thousand and like nine. I gave Uncle Luke like. I ain't gonna say how much. That's cool. On kind of cash in the studio. He redid a song for me. It was a sample, but he redid it live, so I couldn't get sued after that. <laughs> and um, he was a cool nigga. When he got the beefing with uh some old people. He brought me up and was like. See this nigga, da, 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 DJ chose paid homage back in the day. He one of the only people who ever came and spent some money for one of them samples and got it cleared correctly. And I was like, damn, that's hard. That's real hard. Real it's hard. epic because he one of the originators when it mm-hmm. come down to the South. Yeah, yeah. You just you just mentioned a nigga that's an originator. You know what I'm saying? For sure. I I, I heard the other day, uh, Trick Daddy. Now that you got got down there in Miami, Trick Daddy uh, was saying. I heard him say that. Fat Joe said he was the one that kind of helped his career, you know what I'm saying, by putting him on something. It was Luke. But I'm telling you, that's that's what made me think of that. Yeah, yeah. And Trick Dad was like, nah, that ain't, I don't, I think he he just made that up. 
Like he probably he, he's so old or yeah. forgot, you know what I'm saying? But he just didn't didn't value that in that house. Well, see, I ain't gonna lie, I don't, I don't know them niggas, bitch, man. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> <laughs> Boy, he sound like a real interview, nigga. Man, yeah. like, oh, man you know what I'm saying? I'm just gonna, you know what I'm saying? I, I ain't even mean that, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. <laughs> I, I really don't know them niggas, bitch. I know Fat Joe owed me money. But now. what? I'm, I wasn't asking about the money. I was trying to see how would you react if something like somebody <laughs> said they put you on. <laughs> That nigga do not owe you no money like that. Nah, I got a nigga in my hood named Fat Joe. Oh, man. He's stupid as hell. He's stupid as hell. That nigga crazy. <laughs> <laughs> that nigga crazy. <laughs> Say. <laughs> Say. Nigga crazy. Say. Say. And remember, Beyonce, the niggas ain't his own. You know, nigga might. You don't know what that nigga got going on. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Say, how do you think this internet affects your career, bro, when it comes down to interviews, stuff like that, going on different podcasts, going on different media runs. How does that work nowadays as far as the way people are receiving music? I think I like it because um, it, it lets you know who the fuck you listening to. Mm -hmm. And a lot of times it's a lot of people that can't do this and won't do it and they shouldn't because they can't talk. You feel me? Well, I'm from conversation with Rule the Nation. You mm. feel me? Like, I'm the kind of nigga like if me and a woman was sitting across from each other and we were locking eyes and I had to just be vulnerable with her, mm -hmm. I can probably talk to her to a pussy get with. You feel me? Mm. And a lot of niggas can't do that type of shit. They not built like that. What That's make why you different? I, well, conversation ruled the nation. I grew up out like I heard CEO talking about how he was broke. Remember you was talking about that? Oh, yeah. For sure. You know where I was rich at when I was broke? Where? Conversation. Already, I'm the same like way. Me. First way, that's why I didn't trip when we was talking about Usher. Shit, my guy can do whatever she want to do with Usher, cause Usher can't talk like me. He can sing, but he can't talk. Wow, that gas like yeah. Shit, he he got this. <laughs> yeah, I, I, Usher. I don't know if you got more gas than me, cause. <laughs> well, let me ask you this. Man. I can go. <laughs> what was your first car, man? Y'all y'all dealing with them cars down there? I had a Saturn. Ooh. Red Saturn, that bitch was raggedy. I had to, every time I, every time I uh, get the gas station, I had to put some water in that bitch. It would overheat. How much did it cost? Uh, that Saturn was like seven hundred dollars, something like seven hundred, no more than about fifteen hundred dollars. I can't remember. Fifteen hundred? Somewhere around seven to fifteen hundred dollars. It was like my you, first. You bitch. bought it? Uh, my mama helped me get it. She helped you get that thing. Yeah, she helped me get it. Did you did you look at it like when you first got you looked at it I was like damn that whole out there I actually you know? liked, yeah I liked it I was proud of that motherfucker like, like you look out that window when you got a car yeah that motherfucker out there That's like you know? <laughs> yeah that first one that bitch will get you out the yard but that bitch might not get you home <laughs> man <laughs> that nigga that might not get you home yeah. man. Yeah. <laughs> Man, when he, when you look at um like, how do you feel when you put in the box, man? Cause I see I, what you say you were you, like like you you nigga that got a lot of different things going on. You know what I'm mm -hmm. saying? So how, how do you what when niggas start to put you in the box like I just did when I just talked about Texas? How do you feel when that happened? Man, that shit. <laughs> you know that shit hurt because it's like when I look at my life and the things I've done, I don't want to be confined in no box, but I'm loving my current situation because I'm busting that bitch open. Like, the same box they put me in, that, that bitch done got wet. That bitch is all bent out of shape. Like, my my fucking forehead coming out that whole now, nigga. I'm about to be out the box. Mm -hmm. So, it's cool being in that bitch, but now it's like the world... When I seen Beyonce go country, I knew the world was ready for me to get out of that box. Mm, so mm. people like, man, you finally, well, people like, oh, you starting to do, I'm like, bitch, I'm finally finna start showing y'all I do country. Mm. Wow. I've been doing country. I, it's been going on over here. You I gonna hear vlog it y'all. You gonna go, go and vlog it? I'm you gonna let y'all see me. Wow. I'm not gonna hide it no more. I'm, I'm, if she can do Texas hold them and, and then back door and uh, tell you I feel like falling in love. I'm in the mood to fuck something up. Then I can, I can tell you look at that ass and then post my shit about how I, I'm, I'm shit. I, I can give you some of that country shit. And, and and if you look at me sideways, I'm gonna tell you that hey man, it's 2024. Motherfuckers is they ready? Mm -hmm. The world been so slow and dumbed down that the world ready for some complex shit. You feel me? What was your first job? I used to work at Kroger. Second. 
I was second. Getting the carts out to the. I was getting the car side. Loading the groceries in the car. I was loading them groceries in the car. Did I was they tip doing, you? Um, one woman lost her purse and she had an income tax in it, right? An income tax chick. I'm gonna be honest with y'all. <laughs> I took the purse and I threw it in my trunk, right? I checked it and I threw it in my trunk. She had like five bands, right? Hurt my feelings because after I checked the purse, she left. I should have left work that day, but I didn't. I stay. She come back at like four. She came at like nine in the morning. She finally come back for that purse. Cry. Oh my gosh, I get my my purse in here. I'm such a real nigga with a good heart. I snuck out, figured out a way to get to that trunk. I get to that trunk, boom, pop the trunk, put a purse in the basket, and I just kind of hid it behind the car. I walk out there looking for a purse with her. I'm like, let's just go look one more time. Let's go look. <laughs> and when we go look, I get I say, man, that go your purse right there. I give her a purse. When I give her a purse, she she's so ecstatic and cry. Man, that woman gave me a hundred dollars out of that five thousand. And at that point I knew like, man, I gotta quit and I gotta go give me some money. This some bullshit. Mm. She could have gave me a band. I believe <laughs> she, she ain't give you nothing. <laughs> Gave me like a hundred dollars. Damn. Out of that five. I knew I had a hot five in the car. Hot five. Damn. But my heart, I ain't gonna lie, like the way I was built, people to this day be like, I remember, I love you, bro. My brother, we could be in a party, I'm DJing, I'm a DJ. Everybody bring me phones. Hey, somebody lost their phone. My brother used to be my right hand man who. <laughs> bro used to. Oh, thank you. I'm going to make sure they get it. Bro pocket in every phone. At one point, nigga, I thought he was AT&T, all the phones. Yeah, right? So I used to tell him, I'm like, bro, ain't no glory in that shit, bro. Y'all got to get them phones back. Like, what? get that phone back, bro. Your blessing going to come out just being real. So long story short, when, she, when I gave her that purse back, I didn't know it then, but when my blessing hit, it was tenfold. I got a job at uh, Nissan. And right after that, while I was at Nissan, I started making like every check at Nissan on like five bands. Mm. Yeah. But saying all that to say, um, my first check at Kroger was like $170. Damn. Yeah, hard working check too. Balling in the mix. No, that's terrible. <laughs> terrible. You you know what I'm saying? 20, 30 hours. That's a lot of work for 170. Nah, for Falling real. in the mix. What'd you do with that? What'd you do with that bread? Back then, I probably went on a little Cheddar's date. A Cheddar's date. What was the first song? You know I'm a big Pimp C fan. What was the first song that you really rocked out to with, with from UGK or from Pimp? One day you hear. That's the one. Then you go. That's a real song. <laughs> Nigga, the next day you're gone. Ooh, that shit. <laughs> that shit real. That shit real. God damn. It's real. <laughs> nigga, the next nigga, day you're gone. gone. Woo, shit. I down there was sad. Nigga, I'm young. I'm too damn young to be that sad in the back. <laughs> My partner, damn, it got it. Man, it got it. I'm just yeah. back. Baby, mama, L-I-E ain't mine. Yo, all this old. Yeah, you was like, what the hell? I'm in the back of a Corsica, right? With some beat in it. My, my, my mama boyfriend had a Corsica. Matter of fact, it was my mama car. He threw beat in the back of her shit. <laughs> like Jody on, 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 like Jody. on, yeah, like Jody. Like back of a Baby boy. Back, just... <laughs> so, man, I'm talking about the press. This the world we age. live in here, man, it ain't nothing but drama. But Bond drama. hitting that hoe. Bond doing what Bond do. <laughs> Holding them notes. <laughs> Bond, follow me back, nigga. Oh, yeah, I forgot about that shit. <laughs> Let me leave Bun alone. That's it's my rodeo, nigga. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Fuck with me. It's <laughs> rodeo, nigga. Have you even performed at the rodeo yet? Nah, nigga. Let's what? Look at me. Bun, you got to get chosen nah, at the rodeo, man. We go back, Bun. Yeah, it, it can happen. Come on, man. You can sing one of your songs. Bun. Norman. <laughs> I can, oh, you gonna do the country? Let me, that's why I'm trying to get on the road. For real, that'll be good. Let that'll me, be let, bun. You could, hey, you know what you could do right now, bun. You could help a nigga out. I ain't gonna lie, bun. I ain't. It's a lot of things I ain't never had. I ain't had a lot of help, bun. This, this is that one time. And you know, 
Bun, we ain't seen each other since the Trillers tour, nigga. You know what it is. Damn. I was just a little, I was a little hurt because you you unfollowed me, but I realized. I remember when we talked about that on the show. Bun, I realized I was posting a lot of ads and a lot of bad bitches. And you married, man. I know why you probably unfollow me. I respect that. But Bun, I do country now. <laughs> Follow Norman North at least. Because I got a lot of ads. So. <laughs> it do be a lot of ads. Oh, man. Wow, that's hard though, man. I love to see you uh, rock out at the uh, at the rodeo. Yeah. Come on, bud, let's take That'll it. be hard. That will be hard. He yeah. can be two people. He can be DJ Chosen. No, nah, he can just do that rodeo. He gonna do Norman. No, yeah, he gonna do Norman over there. Come on, man. I'm gonna take them Trill Burgers to Nashville. Let's turn up. Damn, How, have you been to Trill Burger? No. That's the problem, you man. So? No, I yeah. know he is. <laughs> man, you better take your ass to Trill no. Burger, man. I don't eat burgers. He got vegan yeah, burgers got over there. Yeah. Yes. I don't eat. I don't eat meat. Go there and get a meat. get a big pokey uh, uh drink, nigga, and some fries around this hole. <laughs> I don't eat. I ain't. You don't eat potatoes, nigga. What do you eat? I don't eat in Houston. Oh, this nigga <laughs> lying <laughs> like what? <laughs> <laughs> get on my back. with a straight face. How big is that though? Bun got that trip burger going, nigga. Bun going crazy. He did a million in one month. Hey, uh, they I'm had so, him on Good American. Hey, no bullshit. I'm so happy for Bun. I'm so happy. I'm so happy for anybody from Houston who getting it. It just feels it. Fuck, fuck Houston. I'm f- anybody from anybody from nothing who getting it. It feels special, especially the ones who getting it from nothing who no, still right. remember about no, nothing. You right? Because a lot of niggas get it and they, they forget. forget that they wasn't nothing. See, when I see a nigga from nothing, still take the time out to be the kind of nigga to have conversations and enlighten people. Man, there's so many niggas that get. The, the cheat code and never want to share it. I see Bun sharing the he enlightening niggas. I love a nigga that'll come back and tell a nigga some free game. Mm-hmm. Salute to that because there's so many niggas that get what they need to get and they almost act like they ain't got no motherfucking duty out here. Oh, no, that's real, real shit. That's, that's real, real, man. I, like I said, man, you anytime you you welcome to Boss Talk One Hundred One. Anytime you've been coming here for everybody. Only one beat you was a uh, Trilly Pope, Trilly Pope, Trilly Pope, but he from Port Arthur. And Banks, my niggas, they they they, they yeah. from Houston though. I fuck with Trilly. You do? Yeah. But I'm gonna get my auntie on this bitch. Please bring Beyonce over here, bro. Gotcha. Please. Well, <laughs> let me ask you something. I'm glad you said it. I'm gonna let you out of here on this question. Okay. Um, Nicki Minaj, uh-huh. Megan Thee Stallion. All right. Back and forth. Lying on your dead mama and all that. Uh, I love Miss Holly, and I I I want to know. That's one line I hate it. That's what I wanted to hear. Like I, I, I mean, it's tricky. I love, I love, I love Miss Holly. R.I.P. She was one of the first people to really, um, give me the confidence as a artist. I remember Miss Holly used to. It would be me and Megan in the room, and Miss Holly would tell me that, "Chose Megan gonna be da da da. You gonna be like the Kanye West." And at that time, I couldn't dress. I had a, I had a, I had a face. You like grow your hair. Out. I want you to grow your hair. Out. She the one first people to tell me grow my hair, out. and I'm like, you think so? She, Charles, I'm telling you, let me style you. I didn't know how to dress back then, so Megan would be laughing, but Miss Holly would be giving me insights on how to get some star power, and at the same time she was helping Megan, cause Megan, you know, Miss Holly used to rap and stuff like that, and she was into. Fashion and music, so she just seen a lot of shit that I never seen. She would be like, "Chose, it's gonna come back, do it," because all this shit just come back. So to see what Megan at, it's a lot of insight that she used to give. I hate it when I heard that line because I got a dead mama. Wow, I didn't know that. Yeah, yeah, my mama passed away, and my mama passed away like ten days before Megan' mama. Wow, all mamas passed away. 15 days before both of our birthdays. Me and May got the same birthday. So when it's certain lines that I know just don't resonate well. With girls and women, I don't get too involved because you don't know why they hate each other. You feel me? They can hate each other because of this or that. So I'm not I'm not in that. But it's just certain things that I just don't think. I ain't going to say, like, you know how people be like, you shouldn't be able to say this. I mean, in rap, men do it all the time. They diss each other dead partners all the time. Mm-hmm. But with this situation, it's like, man, whatever y'all talking about, y'all women, it couldn't have been that deep. 
you didn't have to go that far right away. Ain't nobody dead. Ain't nobody died in the name of y'all beef. Y'all should have just wrapped y'all ass off for a little while. You know, if y'all would have fought or something, y'all could have went wherever y'all wanted to go after that. But it just wouldn't. It ain't called for that. That would have been something if you said in an interview or something that was fast. Okay, that's fucked up, but you said it. But just for it to be on record for the rest of your life, I don't know if that was cool. And I just, I just stay out of women's shit. Like, I think a lot of people don't understand that. But as a man, I learned a long time ago, I stay out of women's shit, man. I don't, I don't fuck with it, bro. I'm but you see it in the comments and the way niggas respond to it. And then the, them comments, are the boy, they beast mode. You know, like you could tell everybody not like you. A lot of people do get in it. And a lot of people say things that you can't really... You know, you won't take back, or you might not have the opportunity to take it back. Yeah. It, whether it come in a song, come in, social media, you got to be careful out here. You know yeah. what I'm saying? But definitely, man, um, but it, you had something else I seen you sit back. I just know that they went to the grave and they, well, you know, was trying to protect the grave because I guess the bars was trying to do something to the mama grave. Oh, damn. Is that crazy? Nah, that's crazy. That's All this shit is kind of insane. Like, it's all insane. I don't like it. Um... I ain't a big fan of none of this shit. Like, it's internet stuff crazy it too. Will, it done got a lot of people killed for sure. Yeah. Wow, man. Well, you know, uh, well, I guess we're gonna we're gonna shut him down at that note. Um, um, man, I just like I said, DJ chose man. Thank you for coming on Boss Talk One One. How can people mm -hmm. get a hold of you? Um, at DJ chose DJ chose dot com. Um. Fucked up my vibe right now, and that's I really blame you. I, and I accept that. That's what I do. A good interview is gonna change it how you want it, flex it. Ah, right, but bro, be careful with that shit, CEO. Cause when when I'm in an interview like this, and you just take me, you don't know what I gotta do for the rest of my day. I got other shit to be doing, Damn, and I just like to be up there on the up and took up. Took you on a whole nother vibe. You took me on a roller coaster. There. I didn't know you were gonna go that deep. You took me that deep, you and I <laughs> almost said it until. What? If you would have, we would have went. You, did you see Bun crying on 85 South? Go on and break down then, nigga. <laughs> this little nigga, I can't stand him. <laughs> he got the camera just rolling. <laughs> He's he like, moving in. Let it out. Stop. 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 <laughs> Charles, no, you, you ain't work for damn. Shit, you right? ain't work for damn, man. You ain't stop that Boy, shit. Boy, right your ass now. is crazy, no. nigga. He crazy. You know nigga. he crazy. He okay. Damn. He be having a straight face and everything. And just going in, man. He nah, his ass fucked me up, man. No, man. You, you, me up. you was a mass magi magician when it come down to interview. You got fuck this man, shit, you man. Man, you don't see these damn teeth. Oh, this You could be an actor, dog. Boy, I'm so fucked up because... I'm gonna leave this alone. Let me get my phone real quick. Let, oh, he, 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 guys, we're gonna nah. have to close it down for a second because he let, let me let DJ Chose nah. get himself together. Thank you. And then we're gonna come back. Thank you. That shit, you boy, you better edit that one over. Okay, yeah. now we're gonna come back. <laughs> Just that quick. <laughs> <laughs> and we're back. And we're back. Uh, DJ Chose is back. Do I need to throw some ass? What I need nah, to he, oh, oh, yeah, to get the vibe back right where you want. <laughs> yeah, this table ain't gonna be able to hold that it ass. It ain't gonna be able to hold all this ass. <laughs> Okay. <laughs> man, thank you so much for coming on the show, man. I hope you enjoyed this much as I did, bro. You wanted the coldest to do this, bro. Appreciate it. I'm gonna get my um real soon whenever you're ready. Let me know. I'm gonna get my god mama on here. Man, I'm ready now. Now who is that? Monique. Oh. I get Monique on here. You you deal with Monique a lot? I know Monique. That's my car mom. She just went off on Club Shay Shay. Yes. My did, sweet baby. You knew she was gonna do that? Who Monique? Monique, I know what we're going to Shout out to DJ Chose. <laughs> Ain't that DJ Chose over there? <laughs> Look like that, that damn DJ Chose was over there, man, at Boss Talk 101, man. Thank you so much, man. We love you, bro. Yes. Yeah, Boss Talk 101, what a boss's talk. Yeah, we on Boss Talk 101. 101. Yeah, we going to talk.